What is the next era? Late modern. The late modern. Surprise. Okay. And in the late modern era, we discuss two people, right? We discuss Dworkin, who is trying to answer the big question, how do judges decide cases? And we discuss Rawls, who is trying to answer the big question, what is law and how do we structure society? Okay? Right. Now, Dworkin is concerned about the positivists and the realists, right? He says, if we just take their idea, then the law is too strict. It is too formal, right? But if we take their idea, then the law is too subjective. Okay? And he doesn't want the law, he doesn't want judges to be going, that's it, that's it, that's all you can have, this is what the law says, that's over, right? But he also doesn't want judges to be going, oh, I feel so sorry for you, right? Because if we take every single case on individual circumstances, then we no longer have the standard, right? There's nothing, you'll go to court and you'll be like, I don't know what's going to happen here, all right? So Dworkin wants to find some kind of balance between these two. And he comes up with this idea called constructive interpretation. OK? And he uses a method, right? And it's fit, weight, principle, tradition. Okay. So he says, when there is a difficult case, and there are two possible answers to the case, the judge can follow this process and decide which answer is actually better, OK? Now, I don't like Dworkin, A, because he doesn't want to be too strict and too formal, and then he gives you an incredibly formal process that you have to go through to get there, OK? And B, because in South Africa, if you go back to the tradition of our law, is that a good idea? Right. However, having said that, despite the fact that I don't like it, the Constitutional Court judges seem to love them. Okay? So there is never a right or a wrong answer. Go back to your study guide, flesh this out a little bit, all right? Okay, so you can see how do judges decide cases? Through the process of constructive interpretation. Okay. Now, um, we get to rules. And I love rules, unlike how I don't like Dworkin. <laughs> now, as I said, rules is trying to answer the question, how do we make law, or what should be law, and how should society be structured? So I'm going to play you a little game with you. Right. I have a Coke. Who wants my Coke? Okay, why do you think you should get my Coke as opposed to me having my Coke? <laughs> I didn't offer it, I just asked. I said, who wants it? Okay. <laughs> okay, who thinks that they should have the Coke rather than me? Why? Because I've already drank water. So I already have some resources and you don't have any resources, okay? Who else wants my Coke? Yeah, okay. No, I'm not offering it. Okay, I'm saying who should get the Coke? What? Okay, because you have a need, right? 
Okay, what else? What, are, what other reasons are there? Okay, somebody might suggest that they need the Coke because they're older than I am. Okay, perhaps there is somebody in the audience who is pregnant and they need the Coke. It's a very bad idea. You will have, but they need the drink because they're pregnant. Their needs are greater than mine. Somebody, uh, hopefully not, but perhaps you would say you want the Coke because you're a man and I'm a woman. Right? Okay? So we all have reasons for wanting the Coca-Cola. I'm not going to give it to any of you because I'm your lecturer and I'm in charge. <laughs> right? Okay? So we all have various reasons to why we should get access to resources. Are we going to resolve those reasons? No, okay, we're going to argue with each other and everybody's going to have better reasons, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So Rawls says that what we do to decide how we get access to resources is we lower, let me just rub this bit out so I've got more space, we lower a veil of ignorance, okay? And this veil of ignorance puts us in the original position. Okay. Under this veil of ignorance, in the original position, you don't know that you're thirsty, right? I don't know that I'm female and a lecturer and in charge, okay? The imaginary woman doesn't know that she's pregnant. This guy doesn't know that he's a man and I'm a woman. Okay? We don't know if you're young or old. If you're black or white, you know nothing. The only thing that you know is that you're a human being. And when we lift the veil of ignorance, you are going to want access to resources. You're going to want some of the coke. Okay? So Rawls says that under this veil of ignorance, in the original position, we would decide on the three principles of justice. Okay. What are the three principles of justice? What's the first one? Okay. Equal access to resources, right? We all get an equal amount of Coca-Cola, right? But we make accommodation for special needs. Okay? Because when the veil is lifted, you don't know whether you're going to be poor or rich, or disabled, or not disabled, whether you're going to get a job or be unemployed or not, right? You don't know that. And you want to make sure that if you happen to be poor, that you have greater access to resources than someone who happens to be rich, okay? If you happen to be a quadriplegic, you are going to be taken care of, okay? Are you with me? So we would decide on that, just in case it happens to be us, okay? And the third thing that we decided is that everybody has equal opportunity to hold positions of power. So when the veil is lifted, we would all have equal opportunity to distribute the coke, all right? So Rawls says, that according to these principles is how we should structure society. This is what law should be, okay? Can you see these principles in our legal system? Yes, you can, right? Do you think the drafters of the Constitution put themselves under a veil of ignorance in the original position when they were drafting the Constitution? Okay, well, we don't know that they did that. I think it's probably unlikely that they did that, but you can certainly interpret rules into that situation because we do have these three principles 
in our constitution. All right? All right. So that is the late modern era. Is everybody happy? Okay.